Hey everyone, it's Todd from Grilla. We're here with you today to talk about servicing your mammoth vertical smoker. We recommend for ease of, of working to set the unit on a table like we have here. It makes accessing some of these components easier. Always, always make sure that you unplug the unit before servicing any components on the smoker. So before you begin, again, as I mentioned, make sure the unit is unplugged. You're gonna see a cover here. This is the cover on your blowing fan. And then there's also a maintenance cover here. And then there's a cover here on your auger motor. The tools you're gonna need to service your mammoth are Phillips head screwdriver, an Allen wrench set, a pair of scissors or a pair of pliers for cutting zip ties, and then some replacement zip ties. The first thing you wanna do is using a Phillips screwdriver, you're gonna to wanna to remove this bottom cover over your fan. So you'll remove these four screws then you'll remove this maintenance cover, which gives you access to your wiring. Set the screws aside so you don't lose them. So here we have our convection fan motor and this is our auger motor here. Now the most common replacement part on pellet grills in general is the igniter. So we'll go through replacing the igniter. To replace the convection fan, you'll see four screws, two here and two here. And you just simply unscrew these four screws and you can remove the convection fan. Okay, so now your convection fan is out of the way and you have access to your igniter. And it's very simple. If you needed to replace the convection fan, what you would do is you would use your scissors to cut these zip ties and then you would unplug the convection fan from its plug. Take your new fan, plug it in and then reposition it back in place and reinstall the convection fan. Very important when you are removing these larger zip ties holding your harness together, that you do so in a way that you don't damage any of this wiring. So always make sure if you're using scissors or if you're using small wire cutters, probably a better option. Just make sure that you cut the zip tie away from any cables so that you don't damage any of the wiring. So in order to remove the igniter, you're gonna need a 2.5 millimeter hex key. So you go ahead and stick that in the set screw. Don't need to remove it completely, just loosen it and you can go ahead and slide out your igniter like so. Cut the wire ties off this bundle again, unplug your igniter from its plug, and then you just fish it through this grommet and then you'll reconnect your new igniter. And then once your igniter's connected, you'll go ahead and reinsert it and using your 2.5 millimeter hex bit, tighten her back up. And that's it, you've just replaced the igniter in your mammoth vertical smoker. Once you've got the igniter back in place, take a peek inside at the fire pot Make sure that the igniter is extending approximately a half an inch outside the fire pot. Make sure it ignites your pellets. If it's not, go ahead and just loosen the set screw again and adjust it accordingly. And make sure you're, you keep your wiring rooted down this way. Keep it away from the heat. And when that's done, you can go ahead and reinstall the blowing fan. So that again is using a Phillips head screwdriver. Very important here to make sure you route these yellow cables correctly. You'll see a little cutout notch here that's designed for those cables to sit in that notch so that they don't bind up with the fan when it's running. So go ahead and position your fan, insert your screws. After you've tightened two screws, particularly two that are diagonal from each other, go ahead and spin the fan just to verify you have no obstructions. Verify that these wires here are in this groove, that they're not anywhere near your fan blade. So now that we've got our new igniter installed and we've reinstalled our convection fan, you can go ahead and get yourself some wire ties. These are readily available at any hardware store. You're gonna wanna take two zip ties and where you had cut these old zip ties off that were installed at the factory, you're gonna wanna rebundle this harness together and just fish through two ties like so. So once you have your two new zip ties in place and your harness is bundled properly, you can go ahead and snip the slack off. Uh, make sure that your harness is positioned in the same position that it was previously. You don't want it to be, you know, up here close to uh, this section of the grill, which gets a little bit hotter in operation. Now, if you ever need to replace your auger motor, that's here and there's a cover over it. A lot of times, you know, if you haven't used your smoker in a long time and you left pellets in there, Moisture accumulates on humid days or even with precipitation and pellets can swell in the auger. 
common issue with pellet grills. If, if we, if we own one for any length of time, probably gonna have to deal with that at some point, but you don't have to have the grill on its back with the grill upright. You can remove these four screws here on this cover, and this is going to give you access to your auger motor. Now, if you're doing this with the grill upright and you just need to clear a jammed auger, there are four screws here that mount this auger and motor assembly inside the grill. With the unit upright, you can remove those four screws and then you can disconnect the auger connector here and you can just pull the whole assembly out and it's really easy to clear a jammed auger. So once you've removed these four screws here and the mounting plates, you can go ahead and remove your auger and motor assembly. Uh, make sure you unplug it here. You'll have to fish the connector through this little grommet here. And then you'll take your new motor and assembly and reinsert the plug through the grommet and insert the assembly back in, add the two plates and re-screw it down with Phillips head screwdriver. Always make sure that um, before you put it back together, if you have any canned air or an air compressor that you blow out any pellet dust or any any dirt that might have accumulated in this area and it is normal when when it's fully tightened to have this free play in the auger motor this is its design is intended to be this way so don't think that you have a problem if you see this this is how it's meant to operate so once you've got your new auger assembly installed and the brackets tightened you can go ahead and take your fan cover for that and reinstall it, make sure it's oriented correctly. Not this way. Try to do it this way, you're gonna damage it. So vents should be facing down if you have the smoker on its back and be facing to the rear of the unit if you have the smoker standing upright. When you're installing this cover, install the four screws first loose before you tighten them off. Just makes everything move a lot smoother and easier. We can go ahead and we can reinstall our maintenance covers. You know, verify again that you have your new wire ties in place on your wire harness and everything's positioned nice and snug and correctly. And we'll go ahead and we'll install our maintenance cover, which this tab just goes in here like this. And that goes up against the bottom of the unit. So as in the case with everything, again, Start your screws first before you tighten anything down. Now, once you've got your covers back in place, screws are tight, uh, go ahead and plug in the unit, turn it on, just to verify that your fan is working correctly. There's no obstructions, there's no noises. Same thing with the auger. You should hear the auger spinning freely, no, no noise or obstructions. If you do hear something, unplug the unit and remove the covers and just examine, make sure there's not you know, something that got left behind or any debris that's in there obstructing either of these four. So now that we have our covers in place and everything's tight, we've verified that all the fans are working properly. Uh, you can go ahead and stand it upright and get it going. So in the event that you need to replace your fire pot, uh, you're going to have to remove your bottom cover as we showed before. Uh, remove the convection fan. Don't need to unplug it. And then remove the igniter from the fire pot. Again, you don't need to unplug the igniter, just loosen that set screw, remove that igniter, and then you'll come back up here. This is your fire pot. Uh, it's a seven millimeter hex bolt, and you'll loosen these two screws here and here. And once these screws are removed, what you'll do is you'll slide the fire pot forward and rotate, and you'll be able to lift it out like so. And then you'll install your new one in the same manner in, rotate, slide back, make sure your auger tube is lined up with the hole in the burn pot. Once you've verified that, you can go ahead and insert the two screws and you've just replaced your fire pot. All you're gonna need to remove and replace your controller is a Phillips head screwdriver. So with your Phillips screwdriver, you're just simply going to remove these two screws on the control panel. And then you're going to remove the controller and inside you're gonna see your, your wiring connectors. You have your power cord connector here, that's white and black. You have your auger and your fan motor connector, that's yellow and red. And then you have your igniter connector, which is purple wire. And then this here is your connector for your RTD sensor. So you're, you're gonna go ahead and unplug these connectors. They're very simple. Just grab them and pull them apart. You're gonna do that for all three of these connectors and for your RTD, and then you'll be able to remove the controller out. You'll take your replacement controller, You'll match up your connectors to the corresponding colors. 
you plug everything back in. RTD goes to this connector here. And once everything's plugged back in, go ahead and just tuck the wires in. Make sure you have your gasket. There is a gasket here to prevent moisture from getting inside the upper housing of the smoker. Go ahead and place the controller back in place. And using your Phillips head screwdriver, just replace the screws. Don't need to over tighten them, just nice and snug is all you need. And that's it, you're all set. You've just replaced the controller in a mammoth. If you ever need to get a replacement or have issues with your controller, just let us know. We have uh, parts in stock, just email or call customer service. If you ever need to replace your RTD, that stands for a resistance thermal device. That's what's telling the smoker your temperature inside your chamber. This is your resistance thermal device here. You'll remove your two screws from your controller and you'll remove the controller assembly and just set it aside. You don't need to unplug these components. The only thing you need to unplug is this one here. This here is your plug for your RTD. So you'll go ahead and you'll unplug that. And it's got a little tab that you push. Don't just yank on it. Push this tab down first. Cut yourself a piece of string or twine about six feet long and tie it to this wire fairly tight so it doesn't come off. And then you'll come down into the chamber and you'll remove these two screws, Phillips head screws that are holding the RTD in place. So you'll remove these two screws completely. Once you remove these two screws completely, go ahead and fish that RTD and its long wire, including that piece of string through making sure that you always keep string outside here so you don't lose connection with that wire. And once you have your string out here, cut it, retie it to the end of your new RTD device, fish that plug back inside. Once it's through both walls of the smoker body, grab, take the, the twine here and go ahead and just fish it back up until you have now have your connector back in the top. Once that's done, you can go ahead and you can tighten the two screws that hold the RTD in place on the smoker body, your RTD to your controller, like so. Make sure it snaps firmly in place. And then you'll go ahead and reinstall your control panel. So once you've installed the replacement RTD, plug the grill in, turn it on, verify that you're seeing a ambient temperature reading when you first turn it on. If you see an error message that displays error probe, then likely you don't have the connector connected correctly. So remove the controller again and examine that connector, make sure it's plugged in sufficiently. So now that we've covered replacing components on your Mammoth, controller, motors, igniter, all the main components of the smoker, we um, hope that the information has been helpful to you. If you ever need to replace a component or you have an issue, you know, just Feel free to contact customer service, send, send them an email, give them a call. We'd, we'd love to help you guys out. We have replacement parts in stock. Uh, just feel free to reach out. We want to make sure that we get you back up and running if you have a problem and that you can get back to barbecuing.